Hello guys, uh, nice to see you. Um, today I'll um, record a video, video which will be uh, like a tutorial about um, uh, Docker files and Docker Compose and I'll try to explain you the difference about the Docker file and Docker Compose and how they work together. And uh, I'll also share a few hints uh, about uh, Kubernetes infrastructure uh, implementation uh, because now we're busy uh, adding Kubernetes support to our open source product Skipper, which is a uh, workflow for uh, uh, ML ops, and not only, actually, it can work with any uh, uh, technology stack. So let's uh, let's go and uh, let's see uh, the, the the source code. I'll try to explain. Um, uh, this application, the, uh, the logic uh, about the Docker um, infrastructure based on our uh, product called Skipper, and this, uh, uh, for example, training service which relies on TensorFlow to build the model based on the data which it gets from uh, uh, data service, and. Actually, uh, this is this application. This system is based on Python, and it's a set of microservices. All of them uh, right now are running on Python, uh, but uh, for Docker containers and images, it doesn't matter. You can use any technology stack, um, any language uh, with Docker, and you can Dockerize any application. So Docker file, and actually uh, every service in um, the system uh, have its own Docker file, and Docker file think about it like a set of instructions uh, how to build the image. So uh, our service is using Python, so uh, we our image extends from Python slim image, uh, which is compressed image to save size. Then we specify working directory, creating a folder inside the the image where the the code will be located. Uh, and then in the next step we copy all the code uh, from this uh, from file from from disk to the uh, container, and then we do install. Uh, yeah, basically in the, this is this is set of instructions to build the image, so not container. So you should think uh, like when the image is being constructed and this uh, file is being uh, created, then this is the set of instructions how to create the image file. And then finally, we have an entry point, and entry point is defined to uh, start command, which will be uh, started when container starts. And by the way, this um, uh, also Docker ignore file, which is very useful, especially if you like myself. I work with PyCharm, and uh, PyCharm creates Python virtual environment uh, for every application uh, in, inside uh, vint uh, folder. And you don't want to copy this folder to uh, the image because it will not will not be used inside the container. And obviously, because it's a um, uh, virtual environment, it, it takes uh, a lot of uh, space. So you don't want to copy that. You can put this folder to be ignored. And then, as you, as as, as soon as you define the Docker file, the next step is uh, Docker compose. And let's see this uh, uh, definition for a training service and. Docker Compose is a file which uh, contains uh, lots of definitions for every container based on every image that you have, and it's a convenient. Um, uh, basically, it provides a convenience, uh, convenient functionality because you could use Docker Compose tool to manage and start stop all your uh, containers at once. You don't need to go and start stop each one by one, and. Yeah, but you should be aware uh, if you would uh, build support Kubernetes support for your application. So Docker files are directly reusable for Kubernetes because Kubernetes is also using containers. So you need images, right? So you could use the same Docker uh, Docker files for uh, to build images for Kubernetes to run to run on Kubernetes. But uh, Docker Compose file is not reusable uh, for Kubernetes because Kubernetes comes with its own definitions. And you could not reuse uh, things that you defined in Docker Compose file. Uh, there are uh, tools and or utilities which could uh, migrate Docker Compose file into the structure which is supported by Kubernetes. But uh, I prefer to build um, uh, Kubernetes infrastructure by myself to be uh, so that it, it it would be more manageable actually. 
Um, right now I'm busy adding Kubernetes support for Skipper and once it will be done, I'll uh, push it to this uh, to the same repository and hopefully I'll record another video and I'll explain how uh, to work with Kubernetes. And, uh, but if you want to run an uh, application on just uh, with Docker containers, uh, you could use Docker Compose and start all of them at once. And on Docker Compose file level, you define uh, such things like from where to take the, uh, to, you define the path to the Docker file, then you define uh, volumes if um, your container is using with external uh, uh, file system, saving data there or reading data from there. And then you define environment variables, also you define network and uh, restart policy. I'm using here restart on failure because uh, training service depends on RabbitMQ service and it works in sequential order. So uh, if there is a dependency on RabbitMQ service, training service would start to be initialized uh, only after RabbitMQ service is started. Uh, but still, uh, RabbitMQ service could be started, but uh, RabbitMQ uh, server would not be started yet. It would be maybe in a starting phase. And training service, uh, training container would be started because it, 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 would, it would, would see that uh, RabbitMQ container is already on. But RabbitMQ server is not yet on. So uh, one functionality from training container would try to connect to RabbitMQ, it will fail. And this is exactly what uh, restart on failure means. If container will fail, after a certain period of time it will try to start again and hopefully by then RabbitMQ server will be already up and our container will be up as well. So this is the idea of um, restart on failure. And yeah, you should be careful what you would uh, put in Docker file, what are in Docker compose file, because such things like volumes, environment variables, technically you could put them in Docker file as well and it would work. Uh, also, uh, I was using entry point, for example, for specified default command uh, inside the Docker file, but I, I could use command property in Docker Compose uh, file. But uh, if I want um, this infrastructure to be reusable for Kubernetes, I should be careful what I put in Docker file and what in Docker Compose. Because such things like uh, volume uh, mapping and environment variables Maybe uh, the properties, the values for these properties would be slightly different when I'll do configuration for Kubernetes. But then uh, default command uh, for the container it obviously would remain the same. Either it runs on, on Docker infrastructure or on, or on Kubernetes, so it could go to Docker file. Well, you just should be careful and think uh, what you put in Docker file and Docker compose file for better usability in the future when you'll go to Kubernetes. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully uh, this uh, quick tutorial answers some of your questions about the Docker file, Docker Compose, what's the difference and how to use them together. So stay tuned and uh, check uh, our open source product Skipper. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, send me email or uh, raise the issue there on the GitHub. I'll be happy, happy to answer or follow up. Uh, thanks and stay healthy and bye.